Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about another software called Metasploit. Now, let's go ahead and type Metasploit in the browser and then let's go ahead and see what this is all about. Metasploit.com is owned by and created by a team called Rapid7. <clears throat> Alright, so they say Metasploit, it is the world's most used pen testing framework. <clears throat> you know, it doesn't really take a lot to say that because there aren't that many kind of, you know, frameworks for pen testing. There are libraries, programs with a single, you know, approach to something, um, but an actual framework that can do stuff, pen test actually do stuff for you. Metasploit is your friend. So really what I'm gonna say is, um, I'm gonna showcase a simple example with Metasploit in this video. And we're gonna use a room on TryHackMe. The IP address is already up, so what I'm really just gonna do is take this window here and and just close everything down and say, we're gonna solve most of the stuff in this window. First of all, let's ping the IP, IP address, which is not the word power. I'm going to copy paste this in the old fashioned way. So let's just ping it and we see that the room is up. So what we're going to do is basically run our in-map scan just on the IP address, pretty easy. And what we see is that we have our server need up on port 8000. Now I know this because I've been doing my footwork in this room many, many, many times. So the 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 actual server that we need to to access is is running on port eight thousand. So let's go ahead and start Metasploit by writing msf console in the uh, in the console. I'm uh, sorry, in the terminal. Now every time we start Metasploit, we're gonna get our fancy little. Uh, this is a ninja today, so a ninja is going to be the um, <laughs> red eyes. <brr. laughs> so what we have here in this misploit uh, version is a collection of 2,162 different exploits. Now that is a, wow, a lot of exploits. So we have different payloads, we have different encoders and different kind of evasion techniques so if we find some sort of did I press enter or something must have done something anyways this is metasploit and we boot it up let me just clear the screen what we're going to do now is going to go ahead and search for whatever piece of software we need to exploit so we know that we, we we found, well, maybe I should show this. So what we're gonna do is we went to port 8000 on this, and then we noticed that this is a CMS system called Bold, and we found the credentials, we logged in, we verified which kind of version it is, and you know, we did all the footwork, all right? So having done all that, we, we're gonna use the search command. We can also just start saying the help command is probably, I guess, the command which is most useful. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can you can get all the different. Uh, let's go ahead and type banner because I would really like to see a new banner. So we can take a banner and we can see different kind of banners. And they're beautiful. So running the help command. We can see different kind of commands here on uh, Metasploit. And the one we're gonna use is search, and that command is being listed somewhere in the in the module command here, search from modules, names, and description. So let's go ahead and clear the screen and write search, and then let's go write bold, and bold is the name of the um, CMS system we are going to exploit and basically you can just type search and then whatever word so let, let's assume that you're gonna search for something different what about HTTP so you're gonna search HTTP and this particular example that's like lots of different you know too many so you would need to know something more um, so 
if it were some sort of version, you can say like HTTP and then say like two point whatever, and then find something. You can see that there are some versions here. So what if I did 2.5, for example, you can see I'm getting less and less results. So maybe 2.5.1. And now we're down to a small little collection here of exploits for HTTP with that version going on. So, all right. So this is the way you search basically whenever you have more than one word and, and, and um, you separate it by space. It's a really good idea to encapture that in quotations in order not to, you know, it, it, it might think this is a command, you know, I, I tried various different things. So this is basically where you search and let's go back to the to the bold one. So search bold. I cannot type search bold. So so the way this is going to work for us is that you can see the small hashtag here. And I agree, they could have written something like ID or whatever. Um, this is actually the the row of exploits. Um, so this is the first row, row zero, row one. So you want to use the first one here. And I think it's a really good idea to read the description first. This one is saying bold CMS 3.7.0 authenticated remote code execution. Now, I know that um, this particular exploit, if we did it, the actual footwork on the web page, we would get this password and the username. Now, luckily, I remember the password and the username. Since this is not about bold CMS, because I do have a video about exactly this room where I do somewhat the same thing as I do now. This video is just directed only towards Metasploit. So I'm not really gonna do all the footwork. If you wanna know how to do the room bold CMS, go ahead and just watch the video on my channel. So the one we're gonna need is this one here. So you might ask how how can we how 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 do we know all these kind? Why not this one and stuff? Well, I'm pretty sure this would also work in some way, like file upload vulnerability. But <laughs> it's just remote code execution is just a lot more interesting. All right, so let's go ahead and type use and use zero because then we're going to take the first exploit. And now it's configuring something for us and doing it with a reverse netcat um, connection thing. And and now what we should do is not really something that is, you know, <clears throat> told. Like it tells us to interact with the module by the index here, typing, for example, use one or whatever, or info one to see information about the different, you know, modules. It could also tell us what we can do here. Now, what you need to do is, is write show options. And um, after that, you can see you've got a lot of different things you can fill in. First of all, let's look at the payload options. Now, the payload is, is going to be opened on our machine. So in order to make this to work, we need to fill out the local host. So we're gonna set L host to our IP address just like that. So that is my IP address on my machine. So localhost is me. Uh, port 4444 is okay. I, I, I don't mind um, I don't mind we use that port. I've seen, I, I've, I've seen some uh, that that's oh, I want to use port 9000. Well you can just go ahead and change that you know I don't really care. So what you need to put here, remember this is called authenticated RCE, it's an authenticated remote code execution. So we need to provide a user that can authenticate, you know, lock in. So we need to provide username and a password. Now, I know that the username is bold, and I know the password is bold admin 123. Now, effectively, I can go ahead and run this now, because you can see what is required to be filled out. Oh, sorry, I didn't fill out the um, the IP address, so we need to do that. So I'm gonna fetch the IP. Gonna just do it the lazy way here. Copy that, and let's paste it in. So 
effectively, <laughs> I can go ahead and exploit this now because I filled out the R host that is required, the password that is required, the others are required. It is running on port 8000. If it was not, then you could just change it. And let's see, the target UI is also filled in and the username is also filled in. So I can effectively go ahead and write exploit or you can go ahead and type run. It's the same thing. I'm gonna type run. So what is going on here is that you are getting target is vulnerable, successfully changed and blah, blah, blah. What you really have here, it says command shell session one open. So now I can go ahead and type who am I? And you can see that I am the user called root or ID, I am root as you can see. You write ls and you have a prompt. I can go to home, flag and then cut out the flag, which is basically um, what this is all about, you know. So now that you have a shell in the box, basically you could try and do different kind of commands here. Uh, but it's not really necessary. We, we're just having, you know, a shell in the box and we can go ahead and 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 exploit further, upgrade our shells and so on and so on. But basically this is how you're gonna use Metasploit in, in, in this easiest form. So let's go up again. You, you're going to, to write search, you know, for some sort of module. You're gonna pick one by using the use and then you're gonna show options and then set the options needed. Now, and when that's done, you just type run or the word exploit. And then in most occasions, depending on which kind of module you chose, this is authenticated remote code execution. Now, in some occasions, we're getting a real shell running, just like, you know, the one we have here, where you can type commands. In other occasions, we will just get a an actual remote code execution, and then we need to take the step ourselves to actually make a real shell out of it. But it's Metasploit. They already done the work for us in like 95% of all the examples. So really, that's the way this is going on on Metasploit. It's kind of easy. What is somewhat challenging sometimes is the different kind of, you know, options you need to fill out because if you don't really know what they mean, it's like, eh. And also, this was an easy list. Sometimes when you search for exploits, you'll find, you know, more. <laughs> and some of them is like weird descriptions and then you need to do some more footwork. You need to research which kind of exploit that works for, for the particular type of software you're trying to exploit. And then you can, you know, try and, 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 and go further using Metasploit. Sometimes it's, it's also better to just find the actual exploit on ExploitDB. And, and I would say in most occasions you can find it on ExploitDB. Uh, so we can just basically try and, and go to ExploitDB. It doesn't, you know, now we're done. Go ahead and write bold. And I'm pretty sure you're gonna find the one we just used here. It's gonna take a while. It's right here. It's called Bold CMS 3.7.0 Authenticate Remote Code Execution. So you're gonna click that and, and, and basically the script here is is what Metasploit used. Now in Metasploit you will not find this script like that. In order to create a Metasploit module, they're called modules, you need to follow some sort of standard created by the creator of Metasploit, the actual program. And creating a Metasploit you know, module is more like configuring, uh, creating a, a config file. So, a, sorry, a configuration file. So, but and this is actual Python code. So there is a slight difference in how you read the files. You also do not open files in Metasploit and then, you know, trying to understand how it's done, that would be, a, I guess, a little sloppy, you can say. So, at least in my perspective. Anyways, this is the way you use Metasploit, and it is the most simple way that I could think about it. Use the search, use the use command, and show options to show the options, fill in the blanks, whatever that is needed required, and then basically, you know, type run or exploit and if you're lucky you're gonna get a shell and then it's basically game over until next time see you again